remember just like the aorta is the principal um, tube or vessel that distributes blood to the entire human body without exception the vena cava systems you know superior and the inferior vena cava bring back systemic blood or the blood that is running through the capillary bed of the entire body back to the right ventricle you have also noticed that the development of the heart is going on no mention was made about the venous system something fascinating takes place in a previous discussion i introduced three veins as a components of each horn of the sinus venosus namely cardinal vein vitelline vein umbilical vein we had right horn and the left horn of the sinus venosus subsequently when the sinus venosus was absorbed into the atrium something else happened the right horn of the sinus venosus started developing better the left horn started regressing as a result the left horn became a tributary to the right horn now this is not very important what i am saying but what is important is this is the first evidence in the developing embryo of shift to the right that means the entire system the venous channels are beginning to shift to the right because in due course it is the right atrium that has to receive all the blood so there is no point in having a huge uh, left uh, sinus venosus left on of the sinus that is also why the left on of the sinus venosus regresses and the right on of the sinus venosus takes the dominance you you you, you got my point now this photograph shows the sinus venosus shows the uh, sinus venosus right and the left you can see the um, posterior cardinal vein this this is the posterior cardinal vein this one and uh, this side similarly you can see the anterior cardinal and together they form the common cardinal vein next slide uh we i'll get back to this a little later we'll finish the cardinal systems yeah we will finish this and then i'll go back to those previous slides let's finish the inferior vena cava very particularly because initially the inferior vena cava is in bits and patches now this this photograph let's concentrate on there are three veins developing this is the posterior cardinal vein this is the supra cardinal vein this is the sub cardinal vein you see this is the posterior cardinal this is the supra cardinal this is the sub cardinal vein similarly on the opposite side next what happens just like you saw in that aorta arches here also certain parts are left over certain parts continue to develop this part is the caudal part of the inferior vena cava up to the point of bifurcation into right sorry left and right uh, common iliac veins then a gap in anastomosis sets in between the posterior cardinal vein and the supra cardinal this is the posterior cardinal supra cardinal anastomosis another anastomosis occurs between this vein and this vein so to form another component a third anastomosis occurs marked in yellow between this and this vein this vein is called the hepatocardiac channel finally when you look at the inferior vena cava it is like a national flag of some countries you know so many colors will be there same thing here also reflecting you know unity in diversity hmm? unity in diversity so you have a component developed from the original posterior cardinal vein this part you have a component that is developed between uh, from that and the uh, so, uh, supra cardinal vein a third part between the anastomosis between the supra cardinal and the sub cardinal vein this is the sub cardinal vein this is the sub cardinal anastomosis finally this is happened now these terminologies are too complex and probably not required at your level suffice to understand that there are multiple channels initially there which subsequently you know certain parts of these channels regress some of them develop some of them fuse with each other to give you this final pattern called the inferior vena cava 
Now this is important because this is important because when you look at the anomalies of the inferior vein cava, this becomes relevant. For example, if this is the normal, you can have a duplicated IVC with one side being less prominent. You know, the main IVC is good enough, but there is an extra IVC here, but it is small. But here is another case where there is one IVC already good one, but the other one is also equally good, you know, solid and large. There is one more case where there is no IVC on the right side, but there is a huge IVC on the left side. You see, these are some of the possibilities that can occur. These are more. There's no point in discussing each one at your level. There is, I mean, I can explain, but the point I want you to understand collectively across the slides is there is a, there is a very uh, tight competition for space inside the human body, particularly in the abdomen. Whenever a new vessel is is there or it is left over as a part of the embryological process. The neighboring structures that were normally supposed to be there are in threat because this new structure will occupy at the cost of the adjacent structure. You, you, you get my point? For example, an extra larger, uh, uh, you know, an extra inferior vena cava, although not warranted at all, may press against, say, the uh, renal artery, may press against some other artery, may press against some other vein. If it presses against some other artery, the blood supply to the uh, organ distal to it is threatened. If it presses against some other vein, the return of blood supply uh, from that vessel is threatened, resulting in its edema. When an artery is blocked, there is a ischemia. When a vein is blocked, there is edema. You see, this is how the clinical presentation occurs as a consequence of these malformations. That is why I'm not going into detail, but in presence, the summary result of uh, this is what I'm trying to convey. Now we will go back to the previous uh, slide. You know, I told you I'll, I'll get back to this.